Well, uh, we're talking today to David Cranston, who is a longtime resident of Lake Luzerne, and we're thrilled that you were able to make the time for us, because you are a living legend up here, and let me tell you why. Um, your dad was a supervisor in the town, the t of the town, and your mom ran various businesses, right? She had, she was a realtor, and she did other things too as well, out of the house, maybe? Yes, correct. Uh, um... And are you living now in the house uh, where you grew up? Yes and no. I'm The house I'm living in now, I've been there all my life except for the first five or six months. And where was the, uh, the original house? The original house where I lived in yeah. was on Bay Road. Okay, and is it still... There? No, the house uh, house is torn down. Oh. After my parents and I moved out. Oh, okay. We still owned the house. Hmm. My parents rented it out. Uh, several different families, and eventually, it had too many fires. And uh -huh. after my dad passed away. Yeah. Hmm. Still had an occasional fire. Oh. And mother decided to have the house torn down. Okay. And that it was the only house on Bay Road that had a basement. Oh, no kidding. That mm. part of Bay Road. Mm. It was a very, very small basement, though. Right. Okay. And uh, what's there now? Uh, an empty lot. Still, still empty. Well, that's why... Um, I was thinking about you as in a in a in a way as royalty because your your dad was supervisor in the sixties, is that right? He was supervisor from nineteen fifty to nineteen fifty one. Okay. Uh why only one term? I believe he took over from uh a previous supervisor who had passed away. Okay. Okay, uh, and and he was not reelected. And he wasn't. Oh, he ran, but didn't. Correct. He, okay. Okay. Well, his pictures at up at town hall. His pictures yes. on the wall there. So, and uh, so your current house. Where is that one? It's on Lake Avenue mm -hmm. at the corner of School Street. Oh, okay. Now School Street. Used to have a school on it. Mm -hmm. It's where the post office is now. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of people think of School Street as having a school, mm -hmm. and it did at one time. Mm -hmm. On that post office lot? Over oh. the firehouse. Over the firehouse, okay. And that was across the street from the post office? No, mm -hmm. the school was on the second floor of... The firehouse. Oh, and that. Oh, and the, that's the post office now. Yes. Oh, I got it. Okay, so you attended school there. No, that was way before my time. Oh, okay. You went to the new, the, the I new. I went Central? to the school on Lake Avenue. Mm -hmm. My graduating class of 1975. Oh, okay. Was the first class to graduate from. The new school on Highland Drive. Okay. But every class I attended was at the school on Lake Avenue across from the lake. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, so, can you can you talk about your folks a little bit? Like, what were they like? And what, what kind of businesses did your mom run? Um, well, my, my folks were... They would teach me different things. Um, for example, if um, I remember one time as a little kid, I took a bath. You know, little kids, don't drain the water out of the tub. Let somebody else do it. So the next morning, I asked my mother where my shoes were. 
Where'd you leave him last? <clears throat> in the bathroom. I looked. Couldn't find him, so I asked my father. And he said, did you look in the whole bathroom? I said, no. I went back and looked. They were floating in the water in the bathtub. Huh. So from that point on, there was a lesson. When you're done with the bath water, drain out the tub, pick up after yourself. Okay. All right. So that's how they kind of okay. taught me different things. By example, yes. so to speak. Okay. That's, Occasionally, if did it work? I was... Did it work? Oh, was yes. It? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Occasionally... Um, it would be other things. I remember at a place my parents owned in Corinth, a rental place. I was banging a dustpan, and apparently my father told me to stop it. As we were leaving, I told my mother, that was fun. She marched me back inside. You sit there and you keep banging that dustpan for about 15 minutes until we're ready to go. Okay. So she was supporting you, indulging you yeah. in, in the fun. And yeah. once okay. my father gave me some money to go to the drugstore to buy something. That's when the drugstore had a soda fountain. Yeah. B. Evans behind it. Yeah. Um, Grace Lemoy and a few others. Mm -hmm. I had some change. Candy bars were five cents, ten cents. Yeah. So I bought a little candy bar and came home. Where's the rest of the change? Uh, I dropped it in the garbage can. It was on the corner by the drugstore. You said that? Yeah. Okay. Well, you go back, you tip that can over, and don't come home until you find it. Uh-huh. He knew better. Right, right. He knew I had spent it. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I went back to the drugstore, and I knew I had to do what he said because he might drive around the around the block. Gotcha. So I tipped it over, <laughs> looked through all the popsicle wrappers and everything. This is great. It's humiliating, but it's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, Doug Stone, the owner, came out. Sure. Your father called. <laughs> Good, yeah. You can clean it up. Go on home. I went home. Nothing was said. Right. But it was humiliating. Yeah. But I learned a lesson. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's how my parents were. That I got that's very that's very graphic. Yeah. Very graphic. That the great great anecdotes. So so your mom well what businesses did she run? What did she do? When my mother came to town in the about 1952, 53, she was the manager of Health Haven Nursing Home, Rest Home, on Lake Luzerne, on the lake. Okay. That was off of Reed Park Road. Okay. And my father was still married at the time to his first wife. Hmm. My mother was an LPN. That's why she was manager. Hmm. Eventually, my father's first wife passed away. Hmm. And somehow, mother got to know my father and hmm. they got married. Hmm. That's Then we lived on Bay Road. Yep. Father sold real estate at the time. Oh, did he? Okay. My mother helped. Huh. And... My mother, in order to keep her LPN license, she eventually went back to work at Wilton Development Center for a few years. She even commuted to Albany to work at Albany County Nursing Home. Mm -hmm. But she kept her real estate license. Okay, yeah. And then opened her own firm. After my father passed away in oh, okay. 1969, hmm. mother kept the uh, real estate. Hmm. So, and she continued for quite a few years. Was it a uh, success? Busy and all that? Yeah, yeah, didn't make a lot of money.
But, and it was at that time, mother decided to take these um, nursing jobs to help make ends meet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And well, was she the sole person in the office, the real estate oh, office? Yes. She yes. was. Okay. Although we did have two salespeople uh, at different times, Doris Waddell. For the name. Stony Creek. Yeah. And Art. Oh. Art somebody. Artal Art. was his last name. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, from Staten Island. He lived up here in the summer. Oh, okay. And he, this, and it, so he so, chipped in there. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, that's good. Very interesting. And she had other businesses too? No. Nope. No, that was the she she took care of folks and did the realty and that was right. her too. Okay. Right. Right. Now when we first moved up to Lake Avenue, we also rented rooms out. Mm -hmm. Tourists. Guests, yeah. I might say. Yeah. And most of our guests were actors at the old Playhouse on Bridge Street. That's right, right next to the bank. Used to be. Used to be. Um, yeah. And that was, was that known in the area? If people came to, was it a success as yes, an enterprise? It, it was. Huh. And people would come from out of the area. Huh. Many of the actors were from New York City. Huh. They would come up here for the summer. Oh my God. Okay. And I only remember one of the actors. Peter, and I'd have to look back in my old records mm. for his last name, but mm. B. Evans remembered him. Yeah. B. Evans was a former historian. Right, right. And I yeah. found out, I think it was about 2017, he passed away in England. Oh, okay. But I remember okay. Peter, Peter sitting on our porch, huh. and I was out there. We had rocking chairs. Mm. The rocking chair was from Health Haven. Right. I had a little bunny rabbit. Mm. And I had to name him Peter. Of course. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In honor of the actor so, right there. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we did sell or rent rooms to mm -hmm. tourists. And it was called Lake Luzerne Tourist Home. <laughs> no, didn't really have a name. Oh, it didn't at that okay. time. Mm. There is that story about Walter Matthau sitting on the steps at Stone's Pharmacy, uh, just you know, talking to folks. Is there? Did you ever hear that? I don't recall hearing okay. that. I've heard it a couple times. I just wondered. I'm sure a lot of people have sat on the yeah the steps right oh sure the drugstore was a gathering place absolutely sure oh this is so interesting this is great i remember yeah the um had a soda fountain yep coffee counter <laughs> one day the uh waitress i don't recall who it was it could have been barbara whipple she went out back in the building they had a, a glass in the window and so person out back could see what was going on mm. and Dot Bancroft came in Dot operated Bancroft's block and cement over in Hadley oh. she saw nobody was at the counter so she went around the counter poured herself a cup of coffee put it on the counter and just then Two gentlemen came in, sat down, and they told Dot, oh, we'd like a cup of coffee, too. So she poured them coffee and served it. Sure. And apparently, Barbara, the waitress, was looking through the window, and, oh, everything's all right out there. So yeah. a few minutes later, the two men said they were ready to leave, and they said, how much do we owe you? <laughs> And the dad said, I don't know. I don't work here. <laughs> right, that's, good. <laughs> that's good. Don't you love a small that's, town? Yes, that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's how it was. That, yeah, that's very, very graphic. That, that sums it up. Thanks for that. 
I'm going to remember that one. Um, so, David, your student years, the schools you attended were, uh, well, you just mentioned uh, uh, the new school, right, the one on uh, Lake Ave. Yeah. And that's and that's the only one you, you attended. Yes. Okay, all the way through. Well, when I attended it, it was the old school compared to now with a new school on Highland Drive. Right, so, the farther north. Yes. Right. I only, I only had the one school okay. on Lake Avenue. Okay. Um, do you still stop and think about people who were teachers of yours that you have a fond memory about or a strong memory or is, oh, is that yes, not the case? Oh, yes, all of them. What, yeah? What, yeah? But what do you mean? I'll only... Um, one of them, the uh, art teacher, David Odepal. I remember we had we had to do a project, and two of my classmates said, "Oh, can we do the project together?" And David Odepal looked at them with a grin. Yes, we finished our project. And we each got our grade. And the art teacher said to these two students, I think it was Jimmy Shield and maybe Ricky Shield. Mm -hmm. You got 100%. But since you shared the project, each of you gets only 50%. Okay. So everybody else was... 70, oh, 80, oh, 95%. Oh. So, then we had yeah. the um, Don Ray set. He was in charge of the video or the for the whole school. Right. Oh, like audio visual. Correct. Right, right. He had an office off the library mm -hmm. on the second floor. It was a brand new office. And he had a sliding window between his office and the library, along with the door and a door into the hallway. And it was very late one day, he was locking up and I was with him. He'd lock the door into the hall, rattle the knob, yep, it's locked. And he'd put the lock on those two sliding glass windows, wiggle the lock, mm -hmm. yep, it's locked. Mm -hmm. Then he went with me out the door into the library locked it and wiggled the doorknob. Yep, it's locked. Mm. And I stood there. Mr. Ray said, anybody can break into that office if they want to. He stopped dead in his tracks, scratched his head. What do you mean? Show me. I went over to that sliding window. Yes. Had a little knob on the bottom of the window yeah, so I know you could the... slide it. Yep. I just picked that little knob up and pulled that glass out. All right. And he stood there, broke out laughing. Mm. I've been locking that window faithfully for the last three years. Right, right. I just hope nothing was ever stolen. Right, right. Or he would have pointed a finger at me. Yeah. <laughs> but that speaks to the kind of relationship you were with that you had. You were comfortable doing that. Oh, yeah. You weren't intimidated by him or he was... Yeah. And I was quite outspoken, too. We had a yeah. third-grade teacher, Mrs. Seaman. I sat on the far side of the room. She was reading from a book. We were all <laughs> seated. She'd look down at her book, and she would read. I stuck my hand up. When she looked up, I put my hand down. Right. She'd go back to the book. I'd put my hand up. She'd look up. I'd put my hand down. <laughs> After a while... When she looked up, she saw me drop my hand. Right. All right, David, what do you want? Sheepishly, I said, never mind, it's too late. <laughs> well, that really ticked her off. She said, well, what did you want? Right. I wanted to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I don't have to now. Right. The okay. Whole, whole class broke out in the room. <laughs> That's good, David. So I, I have to ask you, did did you know Clarissa Marr? Yes. Oh, we loved her when we did the we did this with her. Yeah. We did. Uh, she was 
Could have stayed there all day. She was a yeah. great lady. Great lady. Um, so, uh, but you had memorable teachers. Now, uh, during those years, were you a introverted guy? Were you extroverted? Were you exogenous? It depended on the situation. Exo you know what? Exogenous means something is influenced by outside factors. Yeah. Were you influenced by outside factors? Um, not really. Okay. All right. But uh, so it would introvert or extrovert. You could either one, depending. Yeah, it depending. Depending okay. on the situation. Okay. Very you good. Get people guessing. Right. That's what we keep them off balance. Good. That puts you in a, a position of power and influence. Right. If they're off balance, you're you're kind of in charge. Um, so how did you make, a, upon graduation, uh, the college or work decision? Was that a hard one, or how'd that go? Well, first, I always liked electronics and electricity. <clears throat> I started at Hudson Valley Community College, electronics. And to go from Hadley Luzerne to Hudson Valley, that was a big change. Mm. Were you living in Troy? Yes, I had an apartment. Mm. And I think after the first semester, I dropped out. I figured it was too big of a college. Mm -hmm. So I continued the next semester at ACC. Okay. Closer, closer to home. Yep. Uh, I still didn't like it. So I changed it to parole and probation. That's quite a switch. Yeah. Mm. I think it was more of an infatuation. <laughs> oh. You mean with the subject matter? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. I liked it, <clears throat> but I dropped out. And by that time, my grade point average was like point two. Okay. So yeah, you weren't. They, they told me yeah. don't come back. Mm. So I did go back for data processing, and I loved it. Oh, there you go. You found your, you found your niche. Yes. So to but speak. by that time, I was also working at the state park. Oh, f fourth lake. Yep. Yep. And at the beach in Lake George, million dollar beach. Million dollar beach. You were like ambitious. Yeah, you had a lot going at the on. Time mother worked at Wilton Development Center. She yeah. told me to take a civil service test, so I did. I took it for engineering aid, and I mm. aced it, mm. along with extra credit that the state gave me. And I wrote to them and said I was not entitled to it. Really? Now, what? Why would you? Why? What was that about? Um. You could get extra credit for... Um, no, I mean, why Why tell them you weren't entitled? What was, what well, was because the... I'm sure after a while I have to prove. Mm. And okay. the extra credit was service in the military. Okay. And I had said no. Mm. But they still gave me five, or I think it was five points okay. for serving in the military. Mm-hmm. My score was 105%. Okay. So I was like number three in the whole state for the exam. And this was junior engineer? What did you call it? Um, engineering technician. Ex engineering technician. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, pardon me. Engineering aid. Engineering aid. Okay. Yes. All right. So I went for the interview and I said, look, I'm not entitled to these just five extra points. Hmm. So it knocked me down to like 160 in the list. From 3 to 160? Yes. And I was interviewed, and uh, there was one position that I said, yes, I liked it. It had a lot of traveling. Nobody else wanted it, so they kept going down the list, down the list. They finally got to me. And they hired me. Hmm. I've been there ever since until I retired. Wow. And that was 1978, 70, what? That was 1980. 1980, okay. And eventually I did take an exam for 
um, data processing in the state, but I had already moved into doing that type of work. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there and uh, worked up to senior computer programmer systems analyst. That sounds pretty impressive, David. Thank you. Really? You were ground floor. Yes. Were you that when when the computers filled the whole room and they were, or were you just after that? I remember they used to be enormous. Oh, we did have one that was enormous. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, my office had the first IBM PC AT and IBM PC XT okay. in the whole department. Mm. Wow. Uh, and so you loved it. You found you found what you're calling, so to speak, the, the guy yes. who worked. Yes, until about the last eight years. Yeah, you were sort of... You well, were sort of ready to go. They farmed out what I did to the consultants. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I was delegated to answering questions on how our engineers across the state mm. could enter their data mm. into the data forms that I created. Okay. Not too rewarding. No, no, no. When I do something, build something, mm. create something... I like to be proud, you yeah. know, kind of like a pat on the back. Absolutely. Good job. Yep, absolutely. So. Yeah, I know I you were I stuck impatient. It yeah, you did. I know. I know you did. Um, uh, so, going away, far away to college, like, uh, you know, SUNY, Stony Brook or something, that wasn't in the universe no. for you. Okay. No. You wanted to stay close. Yes, yeah. although I, I enjoyed traveling. and Yeah, you would have taken that job, right? The travel job. Yeah, but I'm a home body. Yeah, I understand. I've always liked it here. Yeah. Although my parents and I, we did a lot of traveling oh. to Long Island, Fort Niagara, hmm. way up to the end of the St. Lawrence. Oh, cool. Where my father's... Relatives from his first wife live. Mm, mm -hmm. Okay. And we knew your In brother. Florida. You went to Florida? And we knew George. Yes, my brother. Your brother, yes. Half brother. Half brother. And I had a half sister. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, now, how about lifelong friends in this area? Do you still communicate with some folks on a regular kind of basis? No, not really. I am aware of them. Mm. Know where some of them live. Yeah. I just don't have the time, and I really should make the time. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm curious about that. You know, when I retired, everybody said, oh, you'll have plenty of time. Yeah? Not the case? No, just the uh, opposite. Okay. I'm more busier than ever. Okay. Is that is that good? Uh, in some ways. Mm. But I haven't fixed the world yet. I never will. Well, I think you <laughs> Not the whole world. The no. whole world's big. Yeah. It's more than just Lazarus. I'm not going to even try it. Yeah, uh, the, the Plattsburgh is part of the world, too. Now, are you going to fix that? You can. You know what I mean? Well, David... Um, David, uh, I'd love to hear... What the summers were like around here when you were a kid? Hot. We went to Storytown. The summers were get, hot? Yes, it was hot. That's because of the sun. Yes. Yeah. I used to get together with the kid on the back street, Dale Wood. Mm. In the lot next door, we'd have popsicle sticks. We would make little roads. We'd have model cars. Yeah. And we'd play cars and trucks. Okay. All day? I mean, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember those days. Hours would go by. It was like 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So you weren't a, you weren't a sports guy, baseball, basketball, that kind of thing. No, I'd rather build something. Yeah, like for example. Roads. <laughs> you, you wanted to build roads. Yeah. Okay. All right. I love traffic lights. 
You love traffic lights. Yes. What about them? I just liked them. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. okay. Right. There's one right here. Yes, I remember that one. Yeah. It started out flashing red and yellow. Oh, did it? When when it first went in. Oh. I told the town clerk in Hadley, Grace Butch, you know. And she never drove. Her husband drove. And she looked at me and, and she said, Oh, huh. If it's flashing red, what do you do? You come up to it and stop and wait for it to turn off? Yeah. And I said, no. You stop, look both ways, and go. Right. And she kind of, you know, tilted her head. Yeah. Then it dawned on me. Grace, the former clerk in Hadley, yeah. she lived near the railroad crossing. Yeah. With the flashing lights. Right. On Rockwell Street. Okay. So she knew if the lights were flashing, you stopped, waited until the lights went out. Right. So that's okay. why she thought right. you had to wait until the red flashing light oh, went out. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> She'd be there to this day. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's great. Oh, okay. All right. So we have a... I want to talk to you about the Historical Society. How did you get involved with it? And when was that? Marge Icorn asked me... Marge Icorn? Okay. At a town board meeting. We were both visitors. She said... The Historical Society is looking for a secretary. I said, okay. And so I was the secretary, I think, uh, 75, 76. Wow. It was pretty new then, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were formed in 73. Yeah. So by 1980, my new job, I did a lot of traveling, so mm. I dropped out. And it was about 2012, maybe 13. Well, 15, 30 years 30. later. Wow. I was asked, we need a president. I said, okay. So I huh. joined again. Huh. That's 32 years after. Yes. So you maintained your interest in it. I've always enjoyed local history. Yeah, yeah. Things, buildings. Right, right. Okay, so you were president, um, and I know you've done other things there too, right? I mean, at the museum, yes, you've done I'm many things. Currently the curator. I helped our former curator, Jan Lederan. Yeah, we love her. And yeah. You were good to her. A little maintenance. You know what? Side. You, yes. were, you were good to her in her last. Oh, yes. You, you were the one. Well, yeah. there were a few of us. But yeah. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Could never get the, her in a motorcycle. I could never see the two of them together, but there they were. You know? Yeah. Seemed out of out of context for her. She was so tiny and all that. Anyway. Um, anyway, so we, we're not going to forget her, okay? We'll think of her. Yes. That's the best we can do. Right, so you, you curator. You've also done... Well, I don't... A lot of ele electrical work. Yes, I enjoy doing yeah. house wiring, electrical right. work. Right, this is all volunteer. On my own house primarily. Yeah, okay, but you did a lot there. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're valuable down there. I hope Thank you know you. that. Well, I hope you know that. Um, so a lot of people won't know that Frances Kinnear gave her house to the Historical Society. Yes. I bet people don't know that. Do you know how that happened, how that developed? Yes. Lester Thomas, the former historian, <coughs> he was a friend of Fran's, and they talked at great lengths, and he, shall I say, convinced her to um, put it in her will. And it was originally to go to the town with the stipulation that if the town did not want it, it would go immediately to the historical society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the town didn't want it. Correct. Okay. And then the, it wasn't a museum yet, so there had to be a lot of work around that. Yes. You yes. Know? We had it insulated. 
um, painted multiple times. Yeah. Um, not much was left to us from Fran's life, mm. like uh, her furnishings. Mm -hmm. Practically all of her furnishings were sold at auction, so they could have been the proceeds split up with the 10 or 12 mm. benefactors of her estate. Okay, okay. So he essentially had an empty house, essentially. Yeah. And you had to, this seems like enormous task of getting a museum going. That would be daunting. Yes, yes. Who, who, who knew enough to even begin? Was Lester a... Yes, Somebody he was, who he was uh, quite involved. Mm. Um, he was going blind, however. Oh. Matter of fact, he sold a wicker chair that was a couple of hundred dollars. He sold it for five bucks. Oh. Because he couldn't see it. Oh, okay. That's Oh, that's unfortunate. I didn't know that. Yes. Um, so... You know, despite being a prominent person, Frances Kinnear, well, she operated a summer camp. Correct. She get, donated the building. She is still a kind of elusive person as far as, she's a little vague. You don't yes. really, you know, we don't have a lot of her uh, statements or we don't know much. Right. We don't. Why? Why? Why do you think that is? Was she? We quiet? do have some diaries of hers. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah. Um. But practically everybody that conversed with her, um, they're gone. Mm. I only spoke to her very briefly mm. a couple of times, and I remember her as very stoic. You might say. Okay. Sincere. All right. Hmm. Um, and the summer camp, um, it's still, I think it's gone. It's up on Second Lake, right? Or it was. It, yes, it was. What happened? Um, I really don't know other than it dilapidated. I huh. remember one of the buildings burnt. Was, okay, was that arson or well, who knows? Oh, who knows? No idea. Right, right. Could have been arson. Could have been sunlight through a, a glass bottle, uh, magnifying. That's right. Or something. That's or right. Right. Anything. So, uh, have you been up there lately at the site? No, I've never seen it. So I no. just, I've never. Uh, but it was successful, right? Yes, I understand. It was very successful. And why did she close it? I don't know. Okay. Who knows? That's lost to history, I guess. I'm sure if I dug into some mm -hmm. records, I could find out why. Mm -hmm. anyway, anyway, and she drove an ambulance in the war. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes. You know who else did? Ernest Hemingway. Really? Yeah. Was he in the passenger seat? Well, that was in World War. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh... Yes. Speaking of the Historical Society, they do have a 50th anniversary coming up, and there's some events going to be happening. And I... Maybe, uh, could you... Did you want to say anything about that? I know there's a, there's a, a buffet lunch. Yeah. Yeah. A buffet lunch. With and silverware, I understand. They're going to supply silverware. Well, silverware... Yeah. Plastic wear. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe. Something to eat with. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's going to be at the Painted Pony. Yes. Right. And that's going to be June 4th. Yes. Of this year. This year. <laughs> not last year. This year. Right. This right. year. And it's probably going to be a Saturday, huh? I believe it's a Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you clarified. All right. So, uh... Of course, the 50th anniversary yeah. was actually a date in April. Okay, right. I could not give the exact date. Though. Well, 
you don't have to. Don't feel bad right. about that. You know, it's this year. It's this year. Fiftieth. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, fiftieth anniversary buffet lunch, painted pony, Longhorn Saloon. Western attire is welcome and encouraged, and bring your camera. Uh, L Laura Lyons, assistant to the New York State historian, will be the guest speaker. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. That should be good. So tickets are twenty five dollars, and how would how would people how would people get in touch to get, get touch. tickets? They have to. RSVP with Susan Trentacost. Okay. Before May 30th. Before May 30th. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm very bad with... No, you got it. Her phone number. Oh, Do I you got... know her phone number? I happen to have it right here. What a coincidence. It's area code 518-403-4044. I'll be sure and call her, and you be sure and call her, too. Yes, you call her, too. All right. All right, so, well, it looks like Frances Kinnear is going to remain elusive for a while. Yes. It looks like she's going to be a mysterious figure, and that's just the way it's going to be. Listen. And, and we, we have to live with it. We can't find out all the details about everybody. Right, right. Or there'd be... Nothing left to find out. This is true. Yeah, yeah. So it's good to have a little mystery. Yeah. Mystery is good. Okay. Uh, I always ask, was John Bennett walking around <laughs> all the time, even back in at that day, back in those days? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, not all the time. Not at 2 a.m. Not at 2 a.m., but that man... Quite have, often. Would, would you like to... How many million of miles has he put on? I could not even guess. <laughs> I love, love I'm going to guess maybe 60, 70 pairs of shoes. Oh, for sure, for sure. Okay, now we're almost, this has been such fun, but I just have a couple more questions. Uh, was the occasional dinosaur ever seen in the area, in your experience? Did you ever encounter one? Oh, yes, quite often. Mm -hmm. Talking to one right now. Are you? Yes. Hey, wait a minute. That's His name is John. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, not really. Unless you call certain old automobiles dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Okay. We okay. had a barn behind our house. Yeah. I have found small skeletons of dinosaurs well i don't know they could have been could have been all right that was before the barn was taken away it fell down oh poor mother advertised it as a barn sale people showed up thinking it was a oh. barn with things to sell and no said, it was the barn no sale. it's a barn i want to get rid of the wood that's left and did, did she sell it do you remember i don't think so probably not so, no, really, dinosaurs. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I always ask people because you never know. You know what I mean? And uh, now the uh, the river, that would be the Hudson. Is it, was it where it is now when you were a kid? And was it flowing in the same direction it is now? Well, that's hard to say. Sometimes it did flow in the opposite direction. Hmm. When we'd have a hard rainstorm, right, it would flow to the north. Huh. I remember one year, it was the Hudson River was flowing up the Sacandaga. How can that be? How can that be? No. That's an April Fool joke. That's an April Fool. Well, that'll work for next year then. Yes. We're a little late. Okay. Um, anyway... This has been fun. Oh, uh, what was the spot where Stewart's is now? What was there back a in the house? day? house? There was a house there. Yes. Agnes Page lived there hmm. and her husband, Mr. Page. Mr. Page. Eldred. 
Eldred. Eldred Page. Okay. Yes. And I think at one time my parents had that house for sale. Okay. All right. And then Stewart's obviously bought the property. Yes. And took it down. Took it down. Mm. Built their store. Then took that down, built another store. Yeah, right, right. And behind it is a big, yes. the big cliff back there. Yes. There's an opening in the rocks there. Yeah. When the state put in Lake Avenue between my house, Corner School Street, mm -hmm. and where it is now, mm -hmm. they dug out from the hillside mm -hmm. and used that for fill for, for fill. through what's called the rock cut. Okay. Oh, that's going up 9N. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And 9N used to be 9 Okay. You know, I wanted to ask you that. What? What's the deal with? What's the big deal about changing a letter? Did that mean something, or? Oh, maybe the state ran out of the letter K's. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, they had a pile of them somewhere, and they used. Nine N went from Keysville. Oh. And it stopped at Lake George. Nine K went from Lake George to Saratoga. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And they just continued it all the way. Okay. To Saratoga. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Well, David, I wish we could spend a few more weeks doing this. This is a lot of fun. But we we have to stop here, unfortunately. But you've been such a good sport. Thank and you're you. Such an important person in this town with what you know and what you've done, contributions you've made and are still making. I think that should be honored somehow, someday, someday. All right? So thanks, everybody. Thanks for showing up. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank in the, you. In the next chapter.